Hello and welcome to this Millennial Review where today we have in front of us here the Tessman Smart Digital Multimeter. This is the model M510 and it's been sent over to me to uh, go ahead and take a look and let you know my thoughts. Now, I do quite a bit of DIY and some electrical work while I'm at it, mostly in the RC car side of things. And when they reached out to me to check this out, I figured it's worth taking a look because I've got an old Craftsman that I've been using for a really long time. And it's going to be curious to see just what you get out of a new digital smart multimeter. Now, the multimeter itself does come with this nice little uh, owner's manual, lots of languages, plenty to look through and certainly would suggest you looking through it yourself. But what I really like is, of course, you do get your case to keep it nice and safe. It's going to come with a digital smart meter, brand name Duracell batteries, which is pretty surprising. Got test leads that can be plugged into your digital multimeter. And then when we pull out the multimeter, it has another couple of very cool things to look at as well. Now, the most interesting one to me is actually up here. This is non-contact voltage uh, sensing area. Now, I've got a Klein Tools NCV pen, which works terrific. And I'm going to see if this Tessman uh, works just as well, because wouldn't that be cool to be able to use your multimeter for non-contact voltage testing as well? And then on the back, this is where our battery is going to go in. But you can also see we've got a little flashlight. Really a nice touch that Tessman has added. So let's get these batteries in and give it a test. Right on the back, we're going to take that screw out of the back. It's going to allow us to, uh, to put our batteries in. And then it's just going to slide right into place like that. And move it out of auto and into non-contact voltage testing. So first one I want to try, just press and hold that non-contact voltage. And that's going to turn it to that mode where now we can test it out. For the sake of comparison, I've got my Klein Tools uh, non-contact voltage tester and a cord here. Now, the non-contact voltage only works with AC, not DC power. So if I put that on, well, red on my Klein Tools means that it is definitely live, which is good because we have that plugged in. And then let's try it out with this non-contact voltage testing. Boom. Yeah, high voltage, low voltage. Well, that's pretty cool. Uh, the low voltage tester, that's nice that it calls that out because uh, if you're doing, say, doorbell work, something like that, uh, where you're not using high voltage, maybe you're doing an in-home wiring for a thermostat, uh, that's pretty cool that it does that. Well, we'll turn that back off, and then uh, this is going to be the flashlight. Oh, well, that turns the backlight on. Excuse me. So just one quick press turns the backlight on for dark work. And then I bet if we press and hold the back, yes, it turns on our flashlight, which pretty impressive. You know, it's uh, certainly not going to be a mag light, but very cool that that's uh, attached with it. So from there, we've got our leads, our test leads. So let's uh, toss these on, place that in. It does come with some covers for the test leads. You might want to hold on to these. That way they stay in nice shape. And let's test some things out. So I've brought a few different items over for us to test this out. See how well it works. How quickly uh, does it auto sense what you're checking out. So go ahead and just keep an eye on our voltage meter. And let's first start with a uh, 20 volt battery. Put our common and then our power lead on, press those two down, and it's finding about 18.22 volts. And that has our DC voltage. Let's go ahead and try it out with this D battery. We'll check this puppy out as well. Now, when we place those two on, it's going to auto range. And we're finding, yeah, about 1.6 volts. What about AC voltage? Because remember, we've got that AC voltage uh, sitting right here. Let's toss our two leads in. And perfect. 
right at about 120 volts. Now, all of those are very cool to see, and we can check out things like ohms, how much resistance is in a battery, uh, which right there, yep, we're creating that, uh, that circuit. We can make sure that the circuit works. We can also check this on another uh, battery, an RC car battery. Maybe. Well, this battery nearly dead. Look at that. 7.57 volts. I did storage charge it, but over two years ago, well, no, 2020, that's nearly four years ago. So a long time ago. And in case you're curious about the accuracy, they do call out a plus or minus uh, about 1% uh, for the different ranges. So the accuracy, we've got 0 0.001 volts when it's below 4 volts, 40, 600 volts. And at 600 volts, their DC accuracy is still within 1 volt, same on AC voltage. So it's nice to know that it's going to be reasonably reliable and the auto ranging piece is super nice uh, especially compared to this particular one that I've got from uh, Craftsman this is well quite a few years old quite a bit larger bulkier heavier has no light uh, no non-contact voltage sensing which again I think that's that's kind of a sweet thing this is going to be a nice tool to play around with and I really like just how this unit works. It's super simple having that backlight, being able to do the flashlight, nice piece too. The non-contact voltage sensing is great. And it's just really nice to be able to uh, plug into a battery and pretty much immediately get a result. Uh, well, assuming I've got the probes in the right place. There we go. 18.22 volts. Well, thanks so much for joining me to check out this Tessman smart digital multimeter this is the model tm510 if you like this think it's something that you should add which personally i'm pretty happy with it so far go ahead and uh, use the link down in the description below it helps the channel and it helps you find this exact one otherwise go ahead and browse the rest of my videos there's lots of other products like this to check out as well and some diy tips to make your house a bit better while you're at it